Have you ever found yourself thinking, oh, the kids have it so easy knowing what to wear every day to school? Kind of wishing you also had a school uniform. Knowing what to wear to work can be a headache and finding the balance between practical, professional and personal taste can be tricky. But what you wear is a direct representation of who you are. Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from My Progression and today we'll explore some of the expectations required of staff in terms of dress code. This video will go through the do's and don'ts and whether you've been a teacher for 10 years or you're just starting out, I want to encourage you to reflect on whether your current dress code is representing you in the best way. They always say dress for the job you want. Although if you want to be a professional footballer, I don't recommend you wear your kit to a physics lesson. But you should be conscious of what your clothes are saying about you. Now, most schools will have a dress code policy to act as guidance. And if you are at a loss of how to dress, it's well worth asking for that policy. It's likely that your personality is reflected in the way that you dress. And whilst I will never tell someone to hide their personality, you should aim for your outfit to reflect the professional educator that you are. So perhaps leave those favourite clothes in the wardrobe for your weekends and holidays and have a set of clothes specifically for work. I think there's a lot to be said for having different clothes for the weekend or just for when you get home. For work, I'll be wearing my smart clothes and as soon as I walk through the door, first thing I do is get into my comfies. It helps me switch off from work mode and just generally feel more relaxed. There's also some of my favourite outfits that I want to save for when I'm not in work. I can feel a bit more special when I wear them. This is your scheduled reminder to like and subscribe to keep seeing more from my progression. So what's acceptable and what is not acceptable? There are many different roles in a school as well as differing expectations of dress for staff. And this will change depending on the age group you're working with or the setting you're working in. All schools should have a dress policy which can be referred to by staff as well as referred to by management if there is an issue which needs to be addressed. However, the majority of school policies explain that staff should wear smart business dress or professional attire, which can leave a lot to interpretation. In general, this will often involve wearing smart suits or separate jacket, trouser or skirt combinations with formal footwear. Men may also be required to wear a tie or to wear jackets when outside the classroom. Professional conduct must always be considered. The job you do must also take into consideration what practically will aid you to carry out your job effectively. If you're with smaller children, you're going to spend a lot of time on lower chairs, the floor or outdoors. Working with younger children requires staff to be able to sit on or crawl around the carpet. In this case, trousers and flat shoes are going to be perhaps more practical as opposed to a smart dress. Paint, Play-Doh and mud from outside may complete your look by the end of the day, so make sure your clothes are easily cleaned and not too expensive. With all of this in mind, you still want to look put together when seeing parents and attending meetings. Sometimes having a spare top or even a full change of clothes may be a good idea, depending on the agenda of your working day. The higher up in the age groups you work, the less likely you are to leave messy at the end of the day. But it's always worth checking that your outfit is in line with school policy and appropriate. So before you leave the house, you wanna check so for women, is your dress an appropriate length? Is your top high enough to be professional? A vest top is always a good call under the top if you're unsure. If you're constantly leaning over the table and bending down, just check there's no room for inappropriate flashes. Footwear needs to be comfortable to cope with all day. Some schools may stipulate no open toe shoes for health and safety reasons, there's nothing worse than a chair leg landing on your big toe. Ouch. For men, your shirt should be tucked in. A blazer is always a good idea to smarten up any outfit. 
In our primary settings, PE days allow staff to wear appropriate PE clothing, trainers, jogging bottoms, and a sweatshirt, or something similar. This may be worn for the day or changed into before the PE lesson. It's always worth keeping your PE kit available just in case an extra session is put into the day. And don't forget your trainers too. When we teach PE in the appropriate clothing, we're modeling to the children what is acceptable for such activities. The accessory of a whistle is something you will need. You don't want to be sharing, so it's definitely worth buying one. Think about the department you work in and what's appropriate for your day. Are you using equipment that a tie or a scarf can be caught in? Health and safety is paramount. So here are some universal don'ts. No denim, no revealing or excessively tight clothing, no t-shirts. For PE staff, a polo is preferable. No combat or cargo trousers, no leggings, unless it's under an appropriate length skirt or dress. No inappropriate footwear like flip-flops or trainers. Obviously trainers are fine for PE. Women's tops may be sleeveless, but should not be strappy. So have narrow shoulder straps or be strapless. And no clothes with rips or tears. Children will also notice things and will make comments about clothes. And this can be a way to build on your relationships with the pupils you teach. Mr. Harris, my dad has that shirt. A pleasant response back only makes for stronger relationships. Oh, does he? This shirt was a present and I really like it too. Or, Mrs. Clifford, I like your dress. Where did you get it? Thank you. Nothing like a bit of prime Arnie, is there? And it was in the sale. The children love to hear a little bit about you and it makes you more human. Question. Can you face a disciplinary action because of the way you dress? If you're consistently breaching your staff dress code policy, you could be taken to a disciplinary meeting at your school. If there is a concern about the way you dress, ideally, this would be addressed by your line manager before the issue escalates. It's always worth asking for the dress code policy before starting school and sticking to it rather than letting things take a downward turn and end up needing to be disciplined. We trust you as professionals to make the right choices. Be easy to manage. The person who's telling you this cares about your career, so take it on board and make the necessary changes. Religious dress. As part of the Equality Act 2010, you should not be discriminated against for wearing religious dress. But any form of dress should not interfere with the teaching and learning process, and pupils should be able to see your face. Turbans, kipper, and headscarves should be allowed, but not compromise health and safety. Your staff dress policy should take into account these different factors. If at all unsure, check with your line manager and school policy. If you feel that you are being discriminated against because of religious dress, please contact your union rep in school or go directly to your union. So can teachers have tattoos? Absolutely. Do they need to keep them covered at school? Well, the law says that's entirely up to the school leaders. Nowhere is the issue of tattoos directly discussed in the Equality Act. If a teacher has an explicit tattoo that's not appropriate for a school setting, they'll likely be asked to cover it, while a visible yet discreet and inoffensive tattoo may be allowed. Although I was asked to cover this one up when I was working in the Catholic school. However, since tattoos don't meet the test as a protected characteristic, School leaders are well within their right to consider tattoos during the recruitment and hiring process. So I'd be tempted to cover up for an interview and then if you feel it would be problematic covering your tattoo constantly, ask for the school's opinion. You may have to cover it or you may be allowed to show it. And there is some really good tattoo makeup out there. So what about jewellery? Appropriate and safe is essential. Will that necklace break if it's pulled on in a challenging situation, or will it potentially hurt you? Those dangly earrings could get caught by a little one in nursery, so wear studs instead to avoid an earlobe tear. Will that scarf or tie get caught in the machine I'm using today in DT? Think carefully about your own health and safety. Makeup. 
We want to look and feel our best, of course. And makeup is acceptable in schools, so wear it if you want. What you don't want to do is distract the pupils with your makeup or open yourself up to ridicule by going over the top. So keep it subtle and easy, which will also save time in the morning. Personal hygiene. Now, occasionally we have been contacted by a school to address the issue of poor personal hygiene of one of our staff. This is an uncomfortable conversation, as you can well imagine. So most obvious statement of this video, have a shower the night before or first thing in the morning. As well as being clean, I find a shower in the morning really helps me wake up and feel refreshed. If you don't already, consider carrying a small deodorant in your bag, especially in hot weather, as it's nice to step away and return to the classroom refreshed and ready for another session. Clean teeth and fresh breath are essential when talking with colleagues, pupils, and possibly parents. I still remember the copy breath of my RE teacher back in the day. Don't be that person. Why not take some mints in your bag to freshen up after a cup of coffee? What you wear to school should be the easy part of your day. We want you to be the best and do your job brilliantly. In all you do, you represent the school you're working in as well as reflecting yourself, so do it well. Don't be scared to ask your line manager or your consultant if you have any doubts. Be the best you can be for yourself and for the children that you work with. I hope that this video has been helpful for you and we'd love to hear any tips or advice you have to support all of our staff in their dress preparation for work. I've been Natalie from My Progression and let's keep your career in motion.